Right. Hello, everyone. We're live. Great. Yes, we're live. Awesome. Okay, let's get started. So today's topic is comfort foods versus pleasure foods. Is it the same thing? What's the difference? What's worse? What's best? What do you eat? We'll talk about all that. So I want to mention that when we're stressed, we gravitate towards comfort foods, so-called, uh, which are comforting, hence the name. Um, comfort foods help us relax, de-stress. They help us calm down. That's what makes them comfort foods. So tell me in the comments, if you're watching, what are some comfort foods that you tend to gravitate towards? You know, the truth is that there is a scientific reason why we want these very specific foods. So if we understand why we are gravitating towards these foods, why we want to eat them, then maybe that could help us to make better choices in stressful moments. So some comfort foods, they are things like ice cream, chocolate, cookies, chips, um, anything that is really deep fried or like heavy in trans fats, um, even sometimes alcohol and beer, um, wine or uh, beer. So let's think about this. What makes a food comforting? There is a huge difference between eating a food because um, of its calming properties and using a food to numb your emotions. There's a huge difference. That kind of eating, numbing your emotions, may buy you a temporary sense of calm. You know, you eat ice cream and you just feel relaxed. But it's a quick fix that wears off really quickly as well. And where does it usually leave you? It leaves you feeling guilty, disappointed with yourself, uh, and also with a few extra pounds around your waistline, right? For women especially. Uh, stressful events, they cause our cortisol levels, the cortisol, which is the stress hormone, it causes cortisol to rise in the body. And cortisol causes food cravings. And in women, those cravings usually tend to be strongest for sweet carbs, and for men, for uh, they are savory carbs. Um, this has been researched at the University of California. And um, the more we eat these foods, the worse our mood gets, because we're simply feeling our stressed emotions. That's really what it is. Now, tell me, is it true for yourself? Do you crave unhealthy foods when you're stressed? Let me know in the comments below. So we need to understand why this is happening so that we can take care of it, we can fix it, we can change it. There is a reason behind our need for unhealthy comfort foods uh, when we're stressed. And it's not quite about the food, it's about its composition and texture. So let's talk about texture first. Um, Creamy foods, for example. There is an ingredient in creamy foods that acts as an antidepressant. Creamy foods are foods like, let's say, cheesecake or custard cream, anything that has cream in it, um, ice cream, even cheese. Cheese has a creamy texture as well. So we have choline in dairy, which uh, has a soothing effect on the body. We have tyramine in cheese, which also acts as a stimulant, so it helps us feel more energized, boosts our mood. Um, and um, the creamy texture too, it makes you feel so calm, right? It, I, I love eating creamy foods. I gravitate towards them as well. Uh, crunchy foods, for example, crunchy foods tend to relax us because the crunching, the sound of crunching, I love it. It's relaxing, right? And also it relaxes your jaw because it gets your jaw moving and breaking the food in the mouth. Then there are the chemical compounds, which um, again, Certain, there are certain ingredients, and I mentioned some of them already, um, but there are certain ingredients in food that makes, uh, make us 
crave them more, uh, like chocolate and coffee. They have specific ingredients that are very addictive. Um, even nuts and seeds, they can be addictive too uh, for some people. So um, comfort foods, those are some of the things that we can look at, the texture, the compound. And there are three types of foods that are the worst choice when you're stressed. So let's talk about that. Uh, many people equate comfort foods with carbs, right? Unhealthy carbs. But there's also sugar. Sugar and grains, different types of grains, are among the worst foods to eat. Um, with grains, whole grains are the good type, but most people don't eat whole grains. You know, when you're stressed, you might want to have pizza, which is made out of white wheat flour, right? So it's really the wheat. And I'm going to talk about this in a bit. So let's start with sugar. So sugar can lead to fluctuations in, in blood sugar. We know that already, which can bring on mood swings, right? One minute you're happy and energized. Next minute, you're tired, you're moody, you have no energy, so you want to eat more sugar, and you become so reliant on that. Sugar consumption promotes chronic inflammation in the body, and in the long term, uh, if you don't take care of that, inflammation can disrupt the immune system, which is, uh, it can, is linked to a greater risk of depression. And 80% of our immune system lives in our gut, so it is important to be eating healthy foods so that our gut works really well. We've talked about this in past videos, so if you want to learn more, you can go back and watch. Uh, and then gluten. So gluten, especially gluten from wheat, more than from any other grain, because wheat is the, um, the most processed grain out there. It's the most ancient grain, and it's been processed more than any other grain. So there are a number of studies that indicate that wheat can have a detrimental effect on mood, promoting depression and other mental health issues, and it inhibits the production of serotonin. And serotonin, that's another hormone. It's the hormone that helps us feel good, the happy hormone. Um, so when that happens, unfortunately, you know, our mood drops because, again, you're eating wheat, serotonin is mostly, 70% of it is produced in the gut. So that affects our brain and that puts us in a more stressed, moody um, situation. But when we gravitate towards these foods, we, turn, we end up in the vicious cycle of constantly wanting more and more and more. And then, of course, processed foods, I mean, aside from sugar and gluten, they do contain a lot of trans fats, artificial col colors, MSG is huge in that as well, and um, artificial sweeteners, a lot of synthetic ingredients that are, they're linked to irritability and poor mood. So we need to rethink our comfort foods, okay? And this is where pleasure foods come in. So pleasure foods have the similar have a similar compound chemical compound and texture in the food but they're healthy because they're also loaded with nutrients and uh, i want to talk i want to give you some examples of that so when we think about pleasure foods like i said they're the healthier version of comfort foods um these are foods that truly soothe and calm you, but they don't do it at the expense of ruining your health, right? Like sugar, like heavy, unhealthy carbs. Um, so what are pleasure foods? Pleasure foods equal calming, energy-boosting foods. And so if you like creamy foods, I don't want to say like because it's not really about liking, it's about wanting. When you're stressed, when you're not feeling well, you want creamy foods. And the reason is because we already talked about that, it's about the chemical compound and the texture of the creaminess of the food. So instead of going for ice cream that is made out of the inflammatory dairy and loaded with sugar, you could try ice cream that actually has some healthy ingredients. You could try ice cream that 
is made out of coconuts, is made out of cashew butter. So you're getting the healthy fats, you're getting the protein, right? Um, and it does not include the artificial flavors and the colorings and the ingredients that a lot of regular ice cream could potentially include. And I'm not saying they all do. There are some really good high quality ice creams out there. And by all means, go ahead and indulge in moderation and mindfully. But um, we're going for the creamy texture. So you could uh, have ice cream that is, um, you know, made with healthier ingredients. Um, you could take bananas, ripe bananas, which are very creamy, and you can blend them into an ice cream sorbet. With bananas, you can add different flavors like cocoa powder or cinnamon, chocolate chips, whatever you want, right? Avocados. Avocados, they stress proof your body. A single serving, which is about a quarter of an avocado, I eat more than that, but <laughs> I think I eat like half an avocado, depending on its size. But a single serving has plenty of vitamin B, right? And full of potassium, which are all helping to helping you calm your body, boost your mood. So you can either have an avocado on toast, or if you want a dessert, you can whip the avocado into a smoothie. You can whip it with cocoa, <clears throat> cocoa powder and some coconut milk and turn it into like a chocolate mousse. It's absolutely delicious, by the way. In terms of milk, if you're someone who likes to drink milk and milk can make you feel bloated and gassy and heavy because dairy can be inflammatory, you could switch to oat milk. Oat milk has the closest consistency of to dairy milk. So it is the creamiest non-dairy milk out there. It's just made out of oats, gluten-free, sugar-free. So you can switch to that. Oat milk can go really well in coffee because a lot of people have a hard time finding an, a dairy alternative to put in their coffee. Um, and you can also, of course, try other nut milks like coconut milk, cashew milk, uh, almond milk, and whatnot. Um, now, talking about the ingredients, tryptophan was one of the ingredients in dairy that helps you. It's like the antidepressant chemical in dairy, right? And it signals the brain to release serotonin, which promotes calmness. So instead of eating those dairy foods that are, again, highly inflammatory if you overeat them, um, like too much ice cream, too much cheese and pizza and all that, Healthier tryptophan rich foods are things like legumes, uh, fish, salmon, for example, also dark chocolate. If you have a piece of dark chocolate, that's not bad. You know, instead of grabbing a, a big chocolate bar loaded with sugar and artificial flavors, go for dark chocolate with some nuts, roasted nuts to give you some more fat and protein. Eggs are also loaded with tryptophan. Eggs also have choline, which we talked about. So that's also, uh, it helps you boost your mood and make you feel better. Nuts and seeds. Turkey. Turkey is so calming. Why do you think during Thanksgiving when you eat a turkey dinner, you feel like you want to sleep? Because it's such a calming food. It's just naturally calming because it's loaded with tryptophan. So those are some of the foods you can go with. Whole grains, you know, instead of wheat, the white, white, highly um, processed wheat, you can go with whole grains. You could even do whole grain uh, bread, whole grain wheat um, products like whole grain pizza, or you can try a different type of pizza crust. Like right now, we have cauliflower pizza crust out there. You can go with that. Uh, and different types of grains, gluten free grains to. Um, play with. And if you want crunchy foods, it's not just about chips, right? You can go with um, healthier alternatives, popcorn. I make popcorn at home, takes five minutes in a pot. I'm not talking about the packaged popcorns. Those are loaded with, again, <laughs> a lot of unnatural ingredients that we should not be eating. But just get the kernels, plain kernels from the store, Throw them in a pot with a little bit of coconut oil or butter, whatever you like. 
cover the lid and just listen until it starts popping and then it's done. Season it with salt, pepper, whatever you want and you got yourself a healthy bowl of popcorn. Uh, you can also try kale chips and I will actually I will share my recipe for kale chips because kale chips, people don't realize how easy it is to make them at home and how delicious and nutrient rich it is. Uh, they're crispy, so they will give you that crunchy, relaxing uh, feeling. And at the same time, you're eating kale. If you hate kale, this is the best way to get kale into your diet. And you can, of course, of course go for, you know, raw vegetables, carrots and celery and cucumber, um, you know, with some dip. Or <laughs> right now I'm having um, a cucumber um, water with some pomegranate seeds in there. It's so refreshing, so delicious. Every time I drink it, I smell the cucumber and I actually want to eat it. So I'm going to eat the cucumber after. And one last thing that I want to mention is to eat colorful foods. I think I've talked about this before, but color enhances your mood. In color therapy, there's such a thing as color therapy. They use um, light in the form of color to balance a person's energy. So color therapy is based on the idea that colors create electrical impulses in our brain that stimulate hormonal and biochemical processes in the body. And these processes either calm us or stimulate us. So, you know, why not eat colorful foods? The feeling you have when you eat colorful foods has a similar effect. If it affects your eating habits, your digestion, it raises your mood when you look at colorful plates. So, plus, you know, colorful foods contain more nutrients. So make sure you eat colorful foods. And I think that's all I have for today. I hope this uh, this was interesting and helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments what else you want me to talk about in my future videos. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.